Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Welcome to my garden. For my June 12th garden column, I wrote a preview of the Spokane and Bloom garden tour. And I was talking to my husband, Bill, saying, you know, I just can't decide what to do for a video this week. And he said, while you're writing about a garden tour, why not give folks a tour of our garden? Not just the vegetable garden, but everything. So that's what's planned for today. Now I wanted to start out by giving you just a little bit of background. We live in Spokane, Washington, which is located about 300 miles east of Seattle. It is almost to the Idaho border, and we live on five acres in a very rural location. We deal with all kinds of critters in the garden, so if you are too, I totally get it. We can have moose, deer, raccoons, rabbits, pocket gophers, porcupines, and meadow voles. But the thing is that we both enjoy gardening and we have loved transforming this bare piece of ground into something that we really enjoy. We have landscaped roughly two acres of the five and yeah, I know that's quite a lot, but it's just such a labor of love for us. So I wanna take you through the different areas so you can see what we've created over the years. I should also add that we've lived here a little bit over 30 years, so it's been a long process, but it is something that I just love so much. Now I realize we're looking into the sun here, but on the approach to our house, we have several rhododendrons, and you can see they're all in bloom right now. Aren't they just gorgeous? There's also a stillbees, lily of the valley, bleeding hearts, and geraniums. Now about two weeks ago, I did a video of these two flower gardens. This one is primarily perennials, and this one over here is the pollinator garden. And at the time, I said that we didn't have much blooming yet, but that I would give you some updates. Well, today's an update. And if you want to learn more about these beds, be sure to go back on my YouTube channel just a couple of weeks, and you'll see the flower garden tour. I wanted to show you kind of an overhead view of our front flower beds just to give you a better idea of how they're laid out. Now here in the main flower bed you can see that the columbines are just going nuts and look at how tall they are. I think they've been enjoying all of the rain we've been getting. You can also see that the white camas lilies are blooming. I had forgotten when I did the tour the other day that the ones out front are white and the ones in the back are blue. <laughs> the bearded irises are blooming as well. I just love these peachy colored ones. They were given to me by my mom ages ago and every spring when they bloom, I think of her. The painted daisies are blooming as well. Now you're looking at the pollinator garden and look what happened since I did the last video. The lupins have absolutely sprung into bloom. There's about 20 of them in this bed and they are just fabulous this year. What a treat. You see all these bright, cheery yellow flowers? Those are Oregon sunshine, which is a native plant. They have been spreading a bit over the years. I'm keeping an eye on them to make sure they're not getting too crazy, but they certainly are very perky. Here's something else in the pollinator garden that has just burst into bloom, and that is blue flax. Isn't that a gorgeous shade of blue? Now this gate goes into our little orchard. We mostly have apples, cherries, peaches, plums, and pears. And the sad story for this year is that we are going to get very little fruit, which is just heartbreaking. We believe the main reason for this is the fact that we had such a horrible heat wave last year. We think the trees really took a hit from it. So the other thing that possibly has happened is that the trees that bloom first and then leaf out, such as the cherries and the plums, also took a hit because we've had an extremely cold, wet spring. So it's kind of like the double whammy and 
yeah, it looks like we're not going to get much fruit this year. Now, we do love to patronize farmers markets, so we're going to have to do that this year, obviously. But, you know, there's nothing better than your own homegrown fruit, right? One other thing that I wanted to point out, which you might not be able to see very well, is that the orchard and our backyard are protected by a deer fence because, again, we get deer and moose. So what we did is we have a four foot tall field fence and then we have three and a half feet of deer netting above it and all of that's attached to very tall sticks of rebar. I think they're 10 feet tall. And so this has worked extremely well for keeping both the deer and the moose out. And you know, when you live in deer country, you absolutely have to use some type of a barrier if you want to be completely successful at keeping them away from the types of things that they like to chew on. Now that's probably making you wonder, well, how is it that we can have these flower beds out here and not have deer problems? Well, for one thing, I mentioned in my last video about the flower beds that we have had much less deer in the yard in the last year and we're not sure exactly what to attribute it to. Could be development, could be disease. And the other thing is that what I've planted out here for the most part are plants that they really don't bother very much. They're more interested in nibbling on the grass to be honest. So that's why I'm getting away with having all these plants out here that for the most part are not bothered by the deer. Now would you like to see our little water garden room? come on in here. And if you're wondering what's up with this wind chime, this is another thing to keep deer from leaping through this opening in this moon gate. They don't like anything around their heads or anything that makes much noise. Now this wind chime is very old. It's lost a few parts. I probably need to replace it, but it works amazingly well at preventing them from jumping through. Okay, we're getting closer to it. So quite a long time ago, probably 20 years ago, we decided we wanted to have a water garden. You know, it's something I've wanted for years and Bill thought it would be pretty cool too. The nice thing about ponds is they attract wildlife. Now, thankfully, because of our protections, it's not deer and moose, but we do get a lot of birds in here bathing and that's primarily what we were after, so that's cool. So it's just a small area and it's kind of a little bit wild and wooly. Uh, we don't mow the lawn real frequently because we just want it to be kind of like this little secluded area that looks a little bit wild maybe. So let's look at the pond. Our goal was to keep it as natural looking as possible. So we have basalt rock, which you find all over this region surrounding the pond. We've got a little waterfall. The pond is 3,000 gallons, which I know sounds like a lot of water. I think it's about 11 by 17. It's three feet deep in the middle, but it has a plant shelf around the perimeter to hold some marginal plants. And that's about a foot down from the surface. We just have goldfish in here because we do get the occasional great blue heron and I've heard horror stories of them eating $100 to $400 and up koi carp. And I didn't want to have that happen here. So we just have your basic goldfish in there. And the plants around the perimeter are things like sweet flag, ribbon grass, gold twig dogwood, Siberian pea shrub, snowberries, ocean spray vine maples and so on. The other thing that I wanted to mention is ordinarily the surface of the pond would be covered with water lily leaves and blossoms. And this year we decided it was high time we went in there and we cleaned things up because it was just going nuts in there. We needed to sort of rain back the water lilies a bit, repot them. So they're starting to come back up to the surface, but Alas, you're not seeing beautiful water lilies just yet. Now just next to our water garden room is the vegetable garden. So come on with me and I'll give you a quick tour of it. Now this is where you're used to seeing me, right? 
I'm just going to do a brief tour of the garden today because in two weeks I'm going to do a detailed vegetable garden update. So look for that. Okay, yes, yeah, so we are a two wheelbarrow family. <laughs> We have a small six foot by eight foot greenhouse that our wonderful neighbors gave us many years ago. And then you can see that we are very into raised bed gardening. In this area of the garden, we have 23 raised beds. All but two are used for growing vegetables. We also like to garden in cloth grow bags. And just on the edge of the garden on the right here, that's two beds of raspberries. We really love our fruit. In the middle, you probably noticed our small hoop house. That's something that Bill designed and built. It fits over two of our raised beds. We use it during the winter months to grow cold tolerant vegetable crops without the use of supplemental heat. And then during the summer months, we use it to grow heat loving crops such as peppers, tomatoes, melons, cucumbers, and so on. You may have noticed what looks like a dog in the background, and that is our coyote decoy, which we nicknamed Wiley Coyote. We originally bought him in order to scare the quail from the garden, thinking that maybe that way they wouldn't nibble on different types of leafy crops that were growing. Well, it worked for about two weeks, even though we moved it around to different parts of the garden. And so now he's just a garden mascot. <laughs> On the south side of our vegetable garden, we've got an area where we're growing red currants, and thornless blackberries. And then if I pan over to the right, you'll see four more raised beds. They all have veggies growing in them. And if you're wondering what that white stuff is covering the beds, that is floating row cover. I'm using it partly to keep the plants warm so they get off to a good start. Again, we're having a very cool spring and very wet. So I'm just trying to baby them a little bit. Once they're up and growing well, I'll take the covers off for the remainder of the season. Ready to continue our garden tour? Let's go into the main part of the backyard. Okay, now you can see part of the backyard. And the first thing I wanted to point out is that we do not have lawn in our backyard. The reason for that is because when our house was built over 30 years ago, they excavated out for a full basement. And I'm pretty sure what they did with that soil is they just put it in the backyard on the soil surface. So what happened is we had really crummy soil to plant a lawn on after that. And what would happen is every spring we'd have this beautiful lush green lawn for about a month, it looked wonderful, and then it would die. It didn't matter how much we aerated it, fertilized it, it always died. And I thought, you know, this is ridiculous. I'm a master gardener, I should be able to grow a lawn. <laughs> so we finally decided, you know, let's rip out the lawn and let's make some island beds that we could plant perennials and bulbs and shrubs in. And that has worked out really well. I'm so glad it turned out this way. I like to call this the big island bed because it's the larger of the two. And I wanted to point out these beautiful flowers here. So this shrub is an American cranberry bush. It's a native shrub, very hardy. And what I love about it is we have these beautiful lace cap flowers in the spring. During the summer, there are shiny green berries. And in the fall, the foliage turns beautiful colors of kind of a burgundy and red, and then bright, shiny red berries. During the winter months, the birds love to eat those berries. So this is definitely a four season plant. The other types of things we have planted in this bed include all different types of perennials. I've got a witch hazel. I've got a couple of native shrubs, golden currants and snowberries. We've got buttonbush and we've got Arnold red honeysuckle. It has really grown into a thicket and the birds absolutely love it in there. 
This area on the back side of our house is partly a rose garden, but I've also mixed in a lot of interesting perennials and bulbs. So I've got oriental poppies in here, sweet woodruff, the camas lilies, different types of species tulips, a tangerine colored geum, some hardy cranes bill, and also some pineapple strawberries. So I got some edibles in there as well. This amazing tree is a hawthorn tree that has just come into bloom. Did you know that they're in the rose family? And all of the flowers look like little bouquets of roses. They're so beautiful. And what's really cool is we have a pair of cedar waxwings that are nesting in here. I've tried not to bother them, but they're in there. Here's a close-up of some of those hawthorn flowers. Aren't they beautiful? Now because I don't want to bother those wax wings by getting too close to the tree, I just wanted to explain that this is the small island bed and the hawthorn tree is basically the anchoring factor of this bed. I have a mixture of all kinds of perennials in here along with some irises as you can see. So there are hardy geraniums. I've got ornamental grasses in there, mainly northern sea oats, which is my very favorite ornamental grass. There's bee balm. There's perennial sunflowers, helianthus. I've got columbines, astrantia or masterwort. I've got a shrub rose at the far end there. And all kinds of plants that I can't think of off the top of my head. But it is just such a beautiful bed, especially this time of year as it's really coming into its own. It will soon be covered with color. Now at the back edge of the landscape portion of our backyard, we've got this long wide perennial bed and it has all kinds of wonderful plants in it. There is another American cranberry bush here. There's also a bird nest spruce. I've got a whole bunch of ladies mantle in here, lots of daylilies, and I even have a little 50 gallon pond in here. It's mostly for birds to take a drink from. But this has got more bearded irises blooming, all kinds of things that I love to grow. Here's a peach colored azalea that is blooming. Doesn't it just light up this area of the garden? On the back edge of the perennial garden, I also have a few snowball viburnums growing. And as you can see, they are living up to their name right now. This tree peony is looking a little bedraggled right now because of the huge downpours that we've had lately. But even so, the flowers are still gorgeous and pollinators just love them. These snowdrop anemones sure are beautiful too. This bed on the back side of our garage is where we grow our blueberries and also strawberries. So they're all mixed together and you know it works really great because we're real careful of the strawberries during strawberry harvesting season and then they sort of die back down a little bit when it's time to harvest the blueberries in July. Like I said we love our berries. Okay we're just about done. So these two large pots contain artichoke plants that we overwintered from last year. Bill dug them up in the fall and put them into these two pots. We put them into our garage, which is not heated, but it's insulated. And they made it through the winter. I watered them about once a month through the winter months. And here they are. And they've even got little baby artichokes on them so far. So I'm pretty excited about that. This is an elevated raised bed that I grow some of my herbs in which is handy because we're right near the kitchen. And here's my green stock vertical planter. So you can see things are growing quite well in it so far. I've got mellow yellow bush beans coming up. Here's the pot of pano peppers. Here's strawberries. We've already harvested four ripe ones from them. I've got some verbenas in here for color and pollinators. And then I've got different types of lettuces planted in the different pockets. Pretty cool, huh? I also wanted to let you know that beginning today, June 9th, and going through the 13th, Greenstock has a sale going on. 
It's 25% off all accessories. And remember that if you use the code SUSAN at checkout, you will get an additional $10 off any purchase of $75 or more. So hey, save some money. But boy, I just love this planter. It's been working out really well, and I'm looking forward to harvesting all sorts of goodies from it this summer. Well, that concludes the garden tour for Susan and Bill Mulvihill. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it wasn't too long, and I really appreciate your watching today. I'll see you next week. Happy gardening!